Ready for those mansions bright I am washed in the blood of the land I am washed in the blood In the soul-cleansing blood of the land Oh, my garment's spotless, it is white as snow I am washed in the blood of the Lamb I've laid aside my garments that were stained with sin I am washed in the blood of the Lamb There's a fountain flowing and my soul is clean Oh, I'm washed in Okay. Hello, everyone. Awesome. First question. Can you hear us? Well, you can hear me. Can you hear Amanda? Hello, everyone. Hello, Amanda. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Awesome. What's happening there, Lydia? What's going on? Lydia, okay. Lydia's kind of hiding under the desk oh. right now, pressing buttons. Woo! Awesome. Welcome to Tree of Life Church. Can you meet us, Tiny? Oh, that's better. Awesome. Well, I'm really, really excited today because we have Pastor Lester Sumner with us and uh, I believe you know we, we met him in January for the first time and uh, he started sharing us about his passion for the UK and a word he had for the UK and I'm like man I'm on fire listening so I want you all to be on fire and more on fire than you've ever been so um, I've invited him to come speak for us so before we just bring him to be with us let's say some hellos and uh, see how you're all doing so uh, Alan there is first again good evening yes, well Alan done, well Alan. done that's awesome <laughs> And uh, hello, Lydia. How did you do that? You're sitting right there. She's right there. Look, see, look, 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 look. There she is. Oh, she won't go. She won't go out. And there's Amanda. How you're sitting there on your phone watching it too? You're right. You sit on there. Oh my goodness. Hello, Karen. Hello, Teresa. Of course, associate pastor, True Life Dorset. Hello, Phil and Liz. Hello, Izzy. Hello, Pippa. Hello, Victor. Hello, Nora. Hello, Morag. Hello, Maria. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Kingdom. Hello, Akilia. Hello, Progress. Hello, Rasha. Hello, Mick and Morag. Hello, Michael from Manchester. Hello, Ken from Manchester. Hello, Patience, pastor of True Life Watford. It was good speaking to you just before this live stream went on. Sorry, we got cut short. We had to go live. Uh, good evening, Claire. Loving David's intro. I agree. I that it's Washed in the Blood awesome. song is just beautiful. And it's a beautiful rendition of it. Absolutely wonderful. Good evening, Anna Sue. Good evening, Sheila. Good evening, Denise. That's great to have you here with us, Denise. Bill and Denise used to pastor Connect Lovely. Church in Manchester. Wonderful, wonderful couple. Good evening, Adam. He now pastors True Life Church in Manchester. Good evening, Derek. Almost stuck in there. Back in the UK now. He texts me today. Welcome back, Derek. Well I know you've got some powerful testimonies. Exploits. I think we might get Derek on here one evening to get some uh, testimonies. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Andrew, good evening. Christine, good evening. Barbara, good evening. Adam, I love this song. I, I, we do too, son. And um, it's been played in church across the nation. It has indeed. Praise God. Um, good evening, Queenie. Good evening, Victoria. Good evening, Ola. Good evening, Janet. Lee and Janet are awesome. Praise God. Good evening, Bill. Good evening, Sheila. And uh, Christine's having a little chat with Barbara there. That's great. Good evening, Julie. Good evening, Lee. Lee and Janet watching on separate devices today. I'm sure they're listening with their birds. I'm sure they are. They, they, they gave away the birds. They don't <laughs> well, they got no birds away. anymore. No, no more birds. They don't got no oh, birds anymore. Oh, no, no, they're oh, going to no. get a cat instead. <laughs> and then they're going to swallow the cat, they swallow the dog to catch the cat, they swallow the cat to catch the bird. Eventually. eventually, yes. Good evening, Christian. Great to have you here. Just uh, days away from becoming yes, a daddy. Yes. Oh, could be any day now. Awesome. Yes, Praise God. Good evening, Moi. I want to start and say we sound good. We're loud and clear. That's good. Amanda's voice is so soft. It's because oh. she's further away from the microphone. Try now. Hello. 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 <laughs> hello. Hello. Awesome. Praise God. And um, what's Lydia doing? She's got rid of all the people. <laughs> Where are all the people? Laura's here. Where. Gidry's here. George is here. Don and Dawn are here. Oh, Corinne's here. Victoria can hear us. Andrea's here from France. Alan's here. Jeanette and Phil are both listening. Jackie and Harmon are both listening together as Where well. Elders of Tree of Life, Suffolk, and no just cat. extraordinary people. No, no cat. cat. No cat, Janet. Okay. Okay, and Beverly from Manchester's here as well. Praise God. And Phil was here as well, but I noticed I just saw the, the chat disappeared. So, if you all yell really, really loud, okay, because he's, he's all the way in Indiana in the States, you've got to yell really loud to get Pastor Lester to come and join us. So let's hear your loudest yells, people. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Lester Samro! Is he here? Do you think he's here? Do you think he heard you? Let's see. Awesome. There here I am. Awesome. It worked. Praise God. 
awesome. We are so honored that you are did here. Did somebody say that. fish and chips? I heard that. Yeah, we did fish and chips. Yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to switch to your banner there. And uh, but just before we um, let you loose to teach everyone and make my face and Amanda's face disappear, um, do you have a link to a website or something if people want to find out more about what you're doing? What would sure. Be Our ministry website is just LSI for Lester Summerall International dot TV dot television. So LSI dot TV will take you to Lester Summerall dot com. Problem is some people don't know how to spell Summerall. So it just makes it simple with the three letters LSI dot TV. I've already been asked how to spell it today before we had yeah, this go. up. Well, yes, have I got that right? Is that correct? Our, oh, our name, yes, yeah, Summerall is correct, yes. Awesome. But originally it came from Somerville, as in Somerville oh, wow. College at Oxford. Yes. Oh, oh how Lovely. wonderful. Well, yeah. That's awesome. So, no, absolutely. LSI.tv. I thought we had the, the shortest website in the world. We have but that is website. impressive. LSI.tv. Okay, listen, <laughs> no one's on here tonight to hear me and Amanda, so we're going to disappear right now and uh, hand over to you. We are very blessed and honored you're here. And uh, take it away. Bring us the word. All right. Thank you so much. You know, I, I was going to wear my Man United jersey, but I didn't want to bring any division into Trees Church. And so, you know, I have, you know, my my Facebook picture says Leicester Square, or is in Leicester, which, you know, most of you folks know, most Americans can't pronounce Leicester right. Um, maybe I should actually change the spelling on my name to Leicester, like Leicester Square. That might be a revolutionary idea. But it's my privilege to meet with your pastors and the apostolic overseers of Trees Church in January and just, you know, had a heart connection, a God connection. It's so fun when the Holy Spirit connects you because then you know it's not uh, something you did. But I just feel so at home in the UK because it is where my natural roots came from. You know, when I get on Ancestry.com, our family came all from from uh, the UK. My, my mother's Canadian and a bunch of our family, they all came from Leeds which I had a chance to go uh, walk around and look through Leeds last summer when I was there visiting your beautiful country. Uh, as I was a kid, I can remember in Canada going to visit my great grandparents and it was all about the Union Jack and it was all about the queen. They, my, my grandmother had these beautiful dishes for the queen's coronation up in her house. And so I've always had a heart for, and a connection for uh, the UK. And as I said, not only is it my natural biological family connection but also spiritual history and so there's so much to share probably won't be able to share all of it on today's um, bible study broadcast whatever you want to call it but there's just so much history in the united kingdom of what god has done and i want to talk to you today about revival and a little bit about revival history you know it's, it's amazing to me when you go back and look at church history as you know there was the great divide between east and west uh, you know, at 1056, you know, the Eastern Church, the Latin and the Western Church, the Latin speaking and the Greek speaking. But it's interesting that even some of the uh, the people that were at the Council of Nicaea in 325 were from Britannia. I thought that was interesting, just even though we know later on the Church of England was created. But uh, the fact that there was there was believers in, you know, the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire there in Britannia. And I really feel like your nation is a is what I would call a hinge of history in the sense it's where East meets West. It's where the ancient world connects with the new world. And, um, you know, our nations have had uh, a long history, sometimes good, sometimes bad, obviously with all the different wars and war for independence and things. But I really believe that God is uniting the United Kingdom and the United States in a unique way in the future, uh, even prophetically, that God would have us working together. If you look at how if it wasn't for our nations working together in World War II, we may not have the world that we have. And so when we come together, powerful things happen. I just really, I feel the anointing talking about that. It just really blesses me. And so in the kingdom of God, I think it's important just that we see that and realize, you know, we can work together. There's such a territorialism in, in churches, in, in regions, but yet we need to realize that God has purposes and roles for us to play, that we can work together. God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for your family. He also has a purpose for nations. We see in Matthew 25 where Jesus says he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. And he's actually talking about nations. And so I believe that the UK 
is a sheep nation and not a goat nation. Now, the enemy may try to hijack that just like he's tried to do with America. But yet, I believe that that your nation is a sheep nation and that God wants to use your nation in a powerful way. And so I want to go back and just give you a brief overview. So my name is Lester Sumrall. I've had the privilege of traveling to over 40 nations of the world, preaching and teaching the gospel over the last 25 plus years, actually over 30 years now. I'm feeling old now. I just turned 51. So since I've been a teenager, I was preaching and traveling. And my grandfather was a man by the name of Dr. Lester Sumrall. And he was connected with Smith Wigglesworth. I don't know if you've ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth from Bradford, England. And, you know, God used him as an apostle of faith to do a lot of things. And I believe he'd come out of Salvation Army. And uh, I just, you know, there's some of these different connections I think need to be mentioned. There's such a deep, rich spiritual history, almost like hidden treasures. You know, you could have gold that's buried under the ground, diamonds that are buried under the ground, but they're they're not valuable until they're mined. And so uh, if you, you know, know the story of, of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, take the time to familiarize yourself with Genesis chapter 26, where Isaac comes to redig the wells of his father, Abraham. So I think we have the opportunity to redig some of these apostolic wells in the UK. When I talk about that, I'm talking about prayer and intercession, I'm talking about praying into what God wants to do now. We're not going back and trying to relive the glory days of the 30s, 40s, 50s, the times of the healing revivals. We're talking about what God wants to do in the now. Remember in Isaiah, he says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. God is doing a new thing. But there's things that we can learn. And there's also these wells, I believe, spiritual wells that have been cultivated in your nation. And you think of people like, you think of people like, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm just now seeing the scriptures up there. That's pretty cool. He's able to pull up the translations. But yeah, you see, you see how, how Isaac is able to go and redig these wells of his father. And there's specifically one, you know, Essek, this means argument. And then another one, Sitna, which means conflict. And then ultimately he gets to a place and it's called Rehoboth, which means wide open spaces. I think in the New Living Translation, it says wide open spaces, or it says, now God has made room enough for us to thrive. God has a thriving for the UK, has amazing things that, that are planned for the UK. But when you think about the wells, you think about, obviously, people like uh, John and Charles Wesley, and how they pioneered the, the movement of Methodism, even you know, still connected to the Church of England. Here in America, you know, we have the the Methodist Episcopal Church. They're still were connected here. Um, and so you think about all that they did to advance the kingdom. Then you look at people like William Booth. I always talk to people from Salvation Army and I ask them, you know, here, here's a book. I'm just going to reference a few books. This one's called In Darkest England and the Way Out. You know, there was such a dark time where when you, you literally had parts of London where it was just brothels and it was, you know, homelessness and it was a mess. And the Salvation Army would go out and roll out a carpet in the street and just begin to pray. And the prayers and the anointing would come and bring sh a shift. And just, again, God's heart for the poor and loving the poor, ministering to those in need. Um, you know, Isaiah 55 talks about how there'll be a breakthrough. There'll be a, a light shining when you when you reach out and when you uh, help the poor, when you help those that have been through things. So here's this book, again, just referencing people who are a part of the wells. Uh, William Booth, General William Booth. There's another book called, I grabbed a couple of them here. This one's called <clears throat> The General Next to God, which is the story of the Salvation Army. If you haven't read these, you need to read these because it's important to go back and hear some of the actual accounts from some of these different ones uh, who've gone before. Here's one by David Bennett. This is just more recent um, autobiography that was done and different ones about Smith Wigglesworth. Here's one called um, Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle of Faith uh, by who, who wrote this one, Stanley Howard Frodsham, who was also a friend of my grandfather's. But amazing, 
these just different connections back to these great men and women of God that were all from your nation. And so here you had, like I said, William, the, the Wesley brothers, William Booth, people like Smith Wigglesworth who were operating in, in the gift of faith and operating in, in healing in just in an amazing way. And obviously some of those strategies you may have heard of, of him even punching people in the stomach. I wouldn't suggest you just go do that in your flesh. You probably need to obviously be hearing from God before you decide to wind up and punch someone in the stomach. That's not exactly uh, something that I would be practicing on a regular basis. But the point is, there is actually something that's so powerful about all these different men and women of God, the Jeffrey brothers. My grandfather was there in England and there was uh, the Jeffrey brothers were having these healing crusades in the Royal Albert Hall where they would actually crank it out 24 by seven. They would have people in there. They'd pray over them. They'd see all these healings and then they would rest for a few hours and then crank it up. So for several years, there's just been a history of revival, a history of healings, a history of deliverance in your nation. I believe that those are wells that you can tap into. And so while my grandfather was there, so my grandfather had been healed of tuberculosis. The doctor signed his death certificate. God supernaturally raised him off his deathbed. And then he traveled the world with a man of God. He was in a place called Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And it was just a divine appointment. He met a man by the name of Howard Carter. And there in London, I believe it's St. Paul's Cathedral has special bells in it. Howard Carter's father was one of the engineers that created those bells in that church. But Howard Carter was the, was the general superintendent of the Assemblies of God of Great Britain and Ireland at that time. And so he came and met with my grandfather. They had a divine appointment in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And he said to him out of the blue, again, my grandfather speaking by the spirit, he doesn't know this man. He's never met him. He shakes his hand and says, I'll go with you over the highest mountain. And then he's thinking, no, I won't. Why am I saying that? Then he says, I'll go with you through the tempestuous ocean. And he's saying, no, I won't. Why am I saying that? And, and, and a year before, Howard Carter had gotten a word from the Lord while he was in London that he was going to travel the world to teach on the gifts of the Spirit. And when he would travel, that God would bring him a traveling companion. And when he comes to you, he'll be a stranger and he'll say this. And here it was line by line, everything my grandfather said to him on the street. And so God connected their hearts and they traveled the world. So literally they went around the world going west into Asia and then up in through China and through across Stalin's Russia, across Hitler's Germany, and then back into the UK. And so when Howard Carter, my grandfather got back to England around 1936, my grandfather met Smith Wigglesworth and they had a very close relationship and so my grandfather would go and visit him at Bradford. But then when World War II started in 1939, most Americans forget that the war started two years earlier for you guys because of, of uh, getting directly bombed and, and things coming right after you where Hitler was trying to attack or did attack uh, the UK. Um, you know, we're always thinking about 1941 with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But in 1939, my grandfather was asked to leave the UK. And so because he left, uh, had to leave, he went to go visit Smith Wigglesworth for one last time. So when he came to Bradford to tell him the sad news that he's been asked to leave, Smith Wigglesworth began to prophesy over to him and began to lay hands on him and pray over him. Again, you got to see he's an 82 or 83-year-old man, and my grandfather's in his 20s. And so again, it's that older generation blessing the younger generation, kind of that Malachi 3 anointing the hearts of the fathers are turning to the children and the children to the fathers. There's a, a direct connect with uh, with the, us getting a hold of what's being passed on to us. So I'm going to read this for you. I have it up here, so I'm just going to read it um, directly from what, what God spoke to my grandfather through Smith Wigglesworth. And he said this. He said, uh, let's see if I can't get it pulled up here. I went into Smith Wigglesworth's home to tell him goodbye. And it was a sad visit because I knew I would probably not be able to see him again in this world. He had blessed me in so many ways. We had discussed the word of God in so many wonderful sessions so that I was always eager to come to his house. And he seemed eager for me to come. At that time, I was in my mid-20s. 
He was in his 80s in 1939. I suppose not many young men were interested in sitting with, uh, sitting at the feet of an old man, uh, no matter what his life had been. I said, Brother Wigglesworth, I'm on a special mission today. I have orders from your government to leave the country, and there's nothing that you've done <clears throat> is what Hitler is doing. And so he then says this. He says, I was explaining that only that I only had a few days before I had to leave the country because of the expectation of imminent Nazi attack. And I told him that I'd planned to go back to the United States and go to other countries to preach the gospel. And the fellowship with him had been so sweet and rare. The only other person uh, that was close to me was Howard Carter or maybe Donald G, another uh, powerful apostolic Pentecostal leader there in the UK. He said they'd blessed me in different ways. And so when he got ready to leave, Brother Wigglesworth stood up and tears began to flow down his face. And he, he mentions that he looked like a Philadelphia lawyer or a Boston banker, that there wasn't a hair out of place and he was looking uh, so uh, classy. And so then uh, like a general, he said, I want to bless you. And he, he grabs a hold of my grandfather's shoulders and pulls him to him. And he says, uh, and then he said he let his head go on onto his chest. He said tears began to flow down his eyes and ran down his face and then dropped down and literally uh, ran on my grandfather's face. My grandfather was only about five foot ten. Smith Wigglesworth was much taller. And so he said, oh, God, let all the faith that is in my heart be in his heart. Let the knowledge of God that resides in me also reside in him and let all the gifts of the spirit that function in my ministry, function in his life. And just as I stood there weeping and praying and holding, he was holding me in this embrace, I felt the holy anointing of the Most High God as it flowed into me. And then he said, uh, he said, you will, be a you will be a blessed man and faith will reside within you and you will do unusual things. Then he stopped for a moment and he said, so interesting, this story. He stopped for a moment and he said, he opened his eyes. And he said, I want to tell you something. His eyes, he said, looked like Elijah must have looked before the chariot of fire came. He said, he said, I see the greatest revival. I see the greatest revival in history of mankind coming to planet Earth, maybe as has never been seen before. I can see the dead raised. I can see hospitals emptied out. I can see every disease healed. And there's no one in the hospitals. Even the doctors are running down the street shouting as they're trying to uh, bring back the multitudes of people that have been leaving. But he goes on and, and talks about this powerful move of God that's going to take place in the last days. And so I just wanted to share that with you because I just felt like, it's such a powerful thing that he talked about. Now, I can just tell you that this quote, again, I heard the story from my grandfather's mouth several times, but this quote came out of a book called Pioneers of Faith. And if you want to know the real version, you probably need to read this version because somewhere somebody decided to take a prophetic word that was given to Brother Hagen in the 60s and this prophetic word that was given to my grandfather in the 30s and merged them together and pour them out all over the internet. So if you look for it on the internet, you're going to find another version that's really not the authentic version. And so I wanted to just read for you the authentic version. But my grandfather, again, he, he went all over the world. He went to 119 different countries preaching the gospel, and he absolutely believed in this powerful revival that was coming. So again, there's so many things that I could share today, and I don't want time to run out here. I know we don't have a lot of time, but... Um, I had the privilege of going with my grandfather to the UK to minister in 1995, and we spent some time there together. And, uh, you know, he had a special place in his heart. He lived in a place called Hampstead Heath in the north side of London, if you know where that's at. It's a really beautiful place where you can go out and literally look all over the, the, the city of London. A great place to pray, play, place to look over the city and bless the city. And so 
I was there with him in 2010. Well, then it was just a few years ago when Brother Copeland laid hands on me and started talking about going out to the nations again. Uh, and, you know, I've just been busy with my family and other things. And right after that, I got an invitation to go to the UK. And so I was excited about going to the UK. And it was interesting. I, my wife, I'm a city person. My wife really wanted to have a, like a hobby farm, wanted to have a place where we could have chickens and goats and have a big garden and everything. And so in 2011, we moved out into the country and we ended up having this little hobby farm with goats and chickens and everything. And so it was just so funny because it seems like, I don't know why it would be, but when I was doing the most menial task is when God would speak to me. So I was literally in my chicken coop, cleaning out my chicken coop. Uh, and it would have been literally on the Saturday in between Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday in 2014. So April of 2014, you can probably go look up the date. But I'm cleaning out this chicken coop and I had the thought in my mind, you know, it's interesting, this time of the crucifixion and the resurrection, you know, thinking back 2000 years, Jesus's dead body would be in the tomb. And then I heard the phrase, I'm about to breathe life into the body of Christ. And obviously I knew it historically talked about what God had done by raising the dead body of Jesus. But then I, I really believe God was speaking to me about some of the historic churches, the you know Anglican church and the uh, Methodist church, these different churches that need a move of the spirit. Shoot, all of us need a move of the spirit. Uh, all of our churches, denominations, we need a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. And so it was just so interesting because as I was there and I had that thought, I'm, I heard the voice saying, I'm about to breathe life into the body of Christ. I started seeing an open vision while I'm standing in my chicken coop. So what I saw in this open vision was I saw Westminster Abbey and I saw Queen Elizabeth sitting there with her family and Prince William was sitting next to her. Actually, Charles was next to her and Prince William was sitting one over from her. But as the Holy Spirit began to move in Westminster Abbey, people were weeping and crying. Some people were getting delivered from demons. Some people were laughing and rejoicing. And so the Spirit was moving in all different kinds of ways. But Queen Elizabeth sat down and she was crying. And then she reaches her hand over and touches William on his shoulder. And I believe it has to do with the scripture where you remember Paul uh, was talking to Timothy and Timothy, uh, he says to Timothy, he says that you've received a faith, your faith, it came from the laying on of hands from your mother and from your grandmother. You can go and read that in Timothy. But I believe that there is a faith uh, that was passed down into uh, William and that God has a special purpose for him. Well, then, as I saw this move of God happening in Westminster Abbey, all of a sudden I saw St. Peter's Square in Rome, or obviously in Vatican City. I saw people, the same thing, worshiping, dancing, getting touched by the Holy Spirit. Then I saw it coming out over the Mediterranean. I saw it touching Israel in a powerful way. Then I saw it going up over Russia, touching Russia. And then I saw it coming down over China. And then in China, it was kind of funny. I saw a group of communist leaders sitting at a table and they're going, how can we stop this? What can we do to stop this thing? It's just so intense. And so, uh, yeah, there's the scripture there in Timothy, 2 Timothy 1. I believe it's those next few verses, 6 and on. Let's look, keep scrolling through those verses. Let's see what else it says there. Um Oh, God's not giving you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a good sound mind. That's a good message as well. Um, but he talks about this anointing that was late. It was it was passed forward from the mother and grandmother onto Timothy. So I think that's powerful. So I saw this, this vision of this amazing thing happening where literally an international revival was breaking out from the UK. So then that was in April. In June, I went on to the UK. And while I was there, while I was there, it was such an amazing experience because I preached for this church in London. And after I was there, the Lord, I said, Lord, do you want me to give this word? And the Lord's like, no. And so I was like, well, that's weird. So then I had some friends who lived out in a place called Guilford, 
And we went, I went on a train to go visit them and had a divine appointment there. Well, then they took me to a prayer meeting. And at this prayer meeting, it was pretty amazing. This friend of theirs was having a prayer meeting and the Holy Spirit was moving in such a powerful way. And uh, there was worship going on. And I went up for prayer and I got hands laid on me and the power God hit me so hard. I fell out under the power of God. I fell forward and fell down on my face. And it was like, wow, God was moving in a powerful way that while I'm laying on the floor, the pastor says, the Lord says, you have an, a word for our nation. And it was so amazing that I got up and shared this word that God gave me about that. So that was in 2014. Then in uh, 2017, I came back to the UK again. And I was at the O'Hare Airport in Chicago, Illinois. And I was speaking to my friend Doug Bonner about the UK. And I started seeing an open vision of a map of the UK. And I, I just specifically saw people who'd come from all over the world. You know, obviously the British Empire, the sun never sets on the British Empire. So you had such an influence all over the world. Now, a lot of those people from those nations have come back to the UK. You have such an international uh, nation. And so I saw some of those people that wanted to come and change the UK. But I felt like the Lord said, they thought they were coming here to change the UK, but I was bringing them here to change them. And I literally saw like floodwaters rising. And I believe it was these apostolic wells that the floodwaters and the waters of revival were rising in the UK. And so people who have come from all over the world with different ideas who want to change the UK, that God's going to touch them in a unique way and that they're going to experience personal revival maybe even carry revival back to their nations because of their connection. And so, yeah, so many things about revival, but I just briefly, I know I've only got a few minutes here, uh, but I just want to share what the Lord put on my heart today about revival. We're talking about revival. We're talking about the move of God. And it's easy for us, you know, here I come from three generations of Pentecostal ministers on both sides of my family. It's easy for us to talk about what was, but we want to, um, we want to uh, talk about what the Lord is doing now. You know, the Bible says, now faith is, I, if I was preaching, I'd say, now everybody say now. You, I can't hear you from out there on the other side of the drink of the pond, but now faith is, what is God doing now? What is God saying now? And so I just feel like it's so important. I've been doing a lot of teaching lately on forms. Is that the spirit, if you look, if you look at in Genesis, when the spirit of God is moving, is moving over the waters, he's always been moving and he never stopped moving. He's moving in a powerful way. He's moving in your life. He's moving in your church. He's moving in your nation. When I think of uh, Genesis chapter 28 at Bethel, you have this experience where Jacob, he he has this open vision during his dream where he sees the, the ladder going up to heaven. And he says, he wakes up and says, this is nothing less than the, the gate of heaven. This is, and, and he, there's a quote that's there. It's so powerful. He says, in Genesis 28, he says, your presence was here and I wasn't even aware of it. I just, you know what? I'm releasing that right now for you over your family, over the UK right now, is that you need to say that out of your mouth. Your presence was here and I wasn't even aware of it. Sometimes you're looking at all the secularism that's invaded your nation. Sometimes you're looking at the Antichrist spirit that's tried to come from other countries to invade your nation, thinks that, thinks that it's invading your nation. But you know what? Psalms 2 says, that there's a God in heaven and he laughs in the heavens. He's laughing about the enemy's plans because they're not going to work. And so literally in this uh, word that's given in Genesis 20, he says, your presence was here and I wasn't even aware of it. You have such a rich history there in your nation, but God wants you to be able to tap into the now. Lord, what are you saying now? We don't want to just hear what you said to the Wesley brothers. We don't want to hear just what you did with Smith Wigglesworth. We don't want to hear just about what William Booth did. We don't want to hear just about what William Wilberforce did. All these people did great things, 
But God, what's going on right now? Thank you for anointing my ears to hear your voice. Thank you, Lord, for showing us what it looks like in the now. And so there's these different forms. You know, when we experience God's presence, whether that's somebody who goes into a Catholic church or they go into some, maybe they went out in nature and they experienced the presence, we easily get locked into this idea of this is how it is. This is the form of how God moves. He doesn't move outside of this because this is where I experienced God. And I was going to quote a story for you out of Luke 9, uh, 28 through 36. But here you have the transfiguration where Jesus gets just transformed into this, literally the, the sun. There's like his clothes look like lightning and he's um, sharing this. I'm going to read for you. Let's go back. Let's read that. Okay, he says, now it came to pass about eight days after these things that he took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And he prayed, and the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became white and glistening. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, which, remember, they symbolized the law and the prophets. And here they're there to see the fulfillment of, Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. They appeared in glory and spoke of his decrease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened as they were parting from him, that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us, for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, and not knowing what he said. Now, see, that's the main crux of what I wanted to get to you, is that, well, yeah, then there's a cloud that came, and the voice spoke out of the cloud, and it was saying, this is my son, accept my son. But listen to this. If you could take the scripture down, I just want to I want your attention because this is so interesting. He says, let's build tabernacles. Whenever the spirit moves, we oftentimes we want to build some tangible thing. We need we need a thing. We need something we can attach our our flesh to. Our flesh is we're here in this earth suit. We need something physical to touch. We need a point of contact. So here, here you had. You know, Peter wanting to build tabernacles to Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And so when we talk about the moves of God that have gone on before, a lot of times it's attached to a church building. Oh, I experienced God there. But we got to understand that the church isn't the building, it's the people. I know we know that, but yet still inside it's like, oh, and we, we don't want to stop uh, the assembling of ourselves together, even more so as we see the day of the Lord approaching. But I just wanted to say, there's a new thing that God wants to do, and it might not look like what we think it's supposed to look like. And we have to be open to hear what the Spirit is saying of what it's supposed to look like now. And that's hard for us. I know I was just at Bethel Church in Redding, California a few months ago, and it was interesting because I was just saying, Lord, I surrender, Lord. I surrender to this, and I surrender that. And, and it was so funny because I'm sitting there journaling. If you could take the scripture down, I just want to. Uh, talk to the people here. It's just so interesting because he says, thank you. It's just so interesting because he says this, the Lord said this to me. He said, I want you to surrender to me what your idea of ministry looks like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mind blown. But it was like, you know, we have these forms and we think it should be a certain way. But God's leading us into something unique for this generation, something that's fresh, that's being, you know, maybe that's doing more street ministry. It's out where the people are. Maybe it's writing new music. Maybe it's new websites. It's different things with the arts. It's different things with business. Some of you are called to business and God wants to use you in business. It's so funny to me. Some people who are in business, they want to be in ministry. Some people who are in ministry, they want to be in business. Some of you may be called to be hybrids. You're, you're literally a hybrid. So, you know, 20, 30 years ago, somebody said, well, I want an electric car and a gas car. 
And, you know, they would have told you, well, no, you can't have that. You got to either have an electric car or a gas car, but you can't have both. And so now you can actually have both. And it's been the same way with some people with ministry where, you know, well, you called a business or you called a ministry. You can't be both. You got to be one or the other. And there are people that are called to one or the other. But there are, I believe, God raising up people that are hybrids where they they have a heart for for the Lord and for the kingdom. They want to see the kingdom advance. We're all in the ministry of reconciliation, by the way. But then also you have this thing where they're also called to ministry and business so that it functions together. And so anyways, there, we need to be open to whatever God wants to do because the spirit, you know, Jesus said the spirit is like, you don't you see the wind blowing in the trees, but you don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going in John chapter three. But the point is, he's saying, I want you to learn to be led by my spirit. Now, yeah, I could go into all kinds of directions here on teaching about things, but God is freeing many of you from legalism right now. I know he's doing that in my life. Is that I've been, if you read Rome, check out Romans 5.17. Let's pull that up. Romans 5.17. This has been one of the most life-changing verses for me over the last uh, couple of years, really. But it's so good for us to get a hold of this because it's something that will rock your world, especially if you've been in church your whole life. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, talking about the first Adam and his failure, much more. I want everybody to say much more, much more. Those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, the Amplified says the free gift of righteousness will reign in life. The Amplified says will reign in life as kings through the one, Jesus Christ. And so we have so many people in church that are still bound with different levels of legalism. They're still living from a place of blended covenant where they're trying to perform. They're trying to be good enough. The measure of a slave, the measure of a slave is, uh, is their performance. That's all they can do. If they don't perform well enough, we'll get rid of them, get another slave. But we're not slaves. We're sons and daughters who are a part of the family of God. And so God wants to bring this revelation more than anything, that he loves you, that it's not about what you've done, but it's about what Jesus has done. In every other religion, it's about what you can do for that deity. But in the kingdom, it's about what Jesus has done for us. We have to begin to look through the glasses of the finished work. And if we're not looking through those glasses, then I think we're seeing the wrong thing because we start to look at things and it's all about legalism. It's all about trying to be better, trying to do better. And it's not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to improve in our life, that we shouldn't reach out for what God wants us to do, but yet it's not incumbent on us. It's the spirit of God working in us. And I could go into a whole teaching on that. Maybe in another time we can share about that. There's so much to go into on that topic, but one of the revelatory ideas that the Lord showed me was how in Hebrews where it says, today, if you will hear my voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. If you go back and look at Exodus 19 and 20, chapter 19 and 20, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people at that time, they literally said, we don't want to hear your voice. It says they were in fear, but they said, we don't want to hear your voice. Go talk to Moses. And so, God sends Moses to go up and get the Ten Commandments. So here's my question. I don't want to get in theological debates with people. It's not what I'm here for. But if you go back and you actually look at what it says, it makes you wonder, would the law have even been necessary if, there's a big if, if the people of God would have been listening or willing to listen to the voice of God? So the takeaway I wanted to leave you with today is the more you learn to hear the voice of God, the less legalistic you're going to be. A lot of people don't want to be a part of the kingdom or they don't want to be a part of church or whatever because they feel like there's all these rules. But it's not about the rules. It's about one rule. And that new rule is be led by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, it says that we there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ, right? There's The condemnation's been lifted, but it talks about now it's the Spirit of life it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has set us free from the law of sin and death. So the new law 
I'm going to leave you with this one because I got to, I got to go. I got to run and do some errands here. But the thing is, is that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's the new law. Being led by the Holy Spirit, that's the new law. You are under a law and it's the law of being led by the spirit. And God's going to help you in your life, in your church, whatever that looks like, in your business, he's going to help you to be led by the spirit. You, 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 you are a mature person in, in Christ. Maybe you just accepted the Lord, but he's going to teach you how to be led by the Holy Spirit in your life and, and in how you can walk that out. And so, yeah, I just, I love you guys. I love the UK. I believe that there's great revival history, but I believe the best is yet to come. God's got even more revival for the UK. And I believe there's a great connection that's already started and it's going to continue between the UK and the US. And so I'm glad to be a part of that. Glad to have been here with you guys uh, at Trees Church. God bless you. Awesome. Wasn't that just wonderful? Amen. Thank Amen. you so, awesome. so much. I don't know if you can see the chat from your screen, Pastor Lester, but there's a lot of people being really blessed by that. Okay, good. You no, know, that's awesome. Yeah. Praise God. And, uh, you know, there is much more. There is absolutely much more. And yes. we all need to believe that. So before I let you go, okay, I have one request of you. Sure. That is, would you speak a blessing over the Tree of Life family for us? We would Absolutely. Really 100%. Father, we just come boldly before your throne of grace mm. to receive mercy to help us in this time of need. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the apostolic leaders, Amanda and Ben, as they lead Tree of Life family. Lord, this family of, of churches that are all over the UK and even internationally, God, thank you. You're opening the door to plant churches all over the world, Lord. We just say yes to that apostolic grace that it's not just for the UK, but it's all over the world. You're opening up doors into the mm. nations. Ask of me and I will give the nations Amen. to you as an inheritance and the peoples Amen. as a possession. So we just thank you, God, for supernatural. I mean, I've seen this in the spirit, but you're like a you're like a spiritually minded um, Wilberforce. But you're also like, come on, help me out here. It's uh, I'm having a, a, a Winston Churchill. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time pulling that one up. But God's called you to have that kind of bulldog uh, in the spirit attitude as you are planting as you're moving forward i know some people might not understand that you're just not a nicey nice person and that's okay is that you're just called to to battle you're called to plow for the kingdom to have that like ox anointing to just plow through even difficult circumstances but what we do we bless all the different churches all the different people yes. that come under this covering even the scripture, I believe it's in Psalms, where it talks about the oil being poured out over mm. Aaron's head and it trickles down his beard and down to the edges of his garment, that there's a blessing for all those who come under trees of life church and that God's blessing would be upon them as they, they serve and minister yes. in that house and sow into that house. And so I just say multiplication, exponential multiplication. We just speak Ephesians 3.20 explosive exponential growth over everything you touch in jesus name amen awesome i like just fell down and not the camera squint that's hey what, man come on we're we're knocking stuff why. out in the spirit Hallelujah. yeah absolutely Hallelujah. we got we got this we got this brand new camera that the head of rayma uk wow this week bought us this new 300 pound wow. camera yeah. which is a blessing, but it means I have to shave very carefully now and make okay. sure everything is fine because it's all such high quality. Wow. Awesome. But honestly, thank you so much for being with us this evening, Pastor. Thanks so much for blessing us. We really do appreciate you. Listen, um, one of the ways you can honor someone who's given up their time is to invest in their ministry and sow a seed into what they're doing. And if you've been blessed today, then respond. You know, if, if you think this was, um, you know, a happy meal at McDonald's, then put two pounds in the offering. If you think this was steak and chips from a fine steakhouse and put 30, 40, 50 pounds, you know, mm. a lot more into that offering and uh, anything given by tree.church slash PayPal, we will give all of that directly to Pastor Lester today. And I'll make sure you get something from the, the Tree of Life Church as a whole as well. But if you thank want you. to invest in this, please do um, get involved with that. Otherwise, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Otherwise, we'll see you at the weekend. Um, we have all um, 11 churches meeting this weekend. And uh, I'm not sure what grace gatherings we have this weekend. Uh, Scotland on Wednesday. 
next next week. Yep, next week, next Wednesday will be Scotland. Um, this join Saturday. Us. Join us in Sterling. Yeah, absolutely. This Saturday is not the first Saturday of the month, so there won't be a meeting. But then the next Saturday we'll be in Southampton. There's a few more things going on as well, but you're more than welcome to join us. But we'd love to see you. Otherwise, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, bless you all. Thank you.